What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly relate reverse rant, no hate. So, Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury 3. So, it went down. It was a good fight. And it's a fight that was prolonged for so long that I know I just felt like I just want this fight to get out the way. Um, you know, when people say, this is what boxing needs. Yeah, this is what boxing needs. They need for guys to go in there and fight. It was just too much nonsense going on. All the insults, all the the, 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 the accusations, the, 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 you know, the complaints and all of the, the, the excuses and the, the lies, the bias, all of that nonsense. It just pretty much wore my patience out as far as this fight. And I still feel the same way. Like, I just, I wasn't really interested in this fight. Now, I will say it turned out to be a good war. Okay, it was a good fight. Um, but it wasn't something that was any different other than Deontay Wilder lasted longer than the last time. And, you know, um, we saw him get dropped. Okay, he got up, he dropped Fury. Five knockdowns all together in the fight between the two of them. Now, am I shocked that it went 11 rounds? No, people forget the first one went 12. You know, um, it's not like this was a fight that I don't know how other people saw it. Now, you may have had people that thought Fury was just going to blow him out like that was, he was just going to go in there in an early annihilation. Who knows? People, a lot, a lot of, well, I know people thought that. And a lot of people thought that Wilder was going to go in there and he was going to get revenge. Now, it's good that it turned out to be a good fight. Okay, because at the end of the day, it's nothing to look forward to for either fighter or for the fighter that went in there looking like shit. In this case, let me break this down and let me say this, okay? I told you guys, the only thing that makes sense as far as Wilder trying to get bigger was simply because he didn't want to be muscled around. He wanted to try to have as much resistance as he could for Fury trying to put his weight on him, pushing him back, you know, muscling him around. And that's exactly what he said. I've mentioned over 300 pounds or whatever he said. And, um, you know, so I'll be able to push him back with no problem. No, no. Your upper body doesn't float in the air. He should have put that weight on his legs, especially the fact that Deontay Wilder doesn't fight on the back foot not well anyway he doesn't you know get on his toes and move he doesn't do that so it's not like he would have exerted more energy by by being putting on his legs or that would have worn him out no he needed um that weight to be on his legs you could see how scrawny his legs are he's all upper body so pretty much um to be able to push back you needed that on on, on the legs truthfully um, he needed to put it, he needed to balance it out, put it that way. But definitely his legs and his thighs, he's scrawny, man. He's six foot seven. So to only be 238 at that height, and you see it's all upper body on him. I didn't feel like that was going to help him, and it didn't. It wasn't going to put more snap on his punch. It wasn't going to make him hit harder. If anything, um, you know, it, it just basically may have... And his mind helped him. But if you see the fight, Fury still walked him down and muscled him around the same way he did in the second fight. Okay. Now, what Wilder did differently was basically minor. But it was enough to keep him in there for 11 rounds. Only thing I saw Deontay Wilder do differently is early from the first round, he started throwing jabs to the body. He did it in the second round. People say he threw nobody shots in the second. That's bullshit. I watched that second. That I watched. I saw the fights. He was throwing body shots. Not not as much as he he should have, but he was throwing jabs to the body. I saw him a couple of times in close quarters when Fury was caught slipping, throw up a cut inside. Um, he always slaps with his left with his left hook when he leads with it. He always like he slaps with it. 
He doesn't throw his he doesn't throw his hook with power, man. He, it's a slap when he throws it. Okay, and that was um, pretty much the same thing we've been seeing, with the exception of him going to the body. Um, he still walks back in a straight line when you put pressure on him. Now let's go back to those training videos when he was hopping around and you know Malik Scott was throwing those little phone things he, and I said you won't see that in the fight. There's nothing coming back at him. He's going through drills. He knows what's coming, right? Did you see the head movement? Did you see him slip? You know? Did you see pull counters? Did you see? No, you didn't see that. When he dropped Fury, Fury was coming inside, close quarters with his hands open, anxious to land a hard shot, not expecting Wilder to throw back. When he did, Wilder threw more punches than he was expecting. Wilder, his only thing Wilder throws with fluidity is the jab right hand. Everything else is just one. Two, three, then it's the same shit. Um, Wilder looked tired after he got dropped. He, he, you could start to see he was fatiguing, and that was only the fourth round. By the sixth round, Wilder was throwing punches, overcommitting the shots, throwing wild shit. This time he was back up, hands down, and Fury, because he got dropped, was being cautious. I felt like if Fury would have jumped on him properly, he could have got him out of there sooner. Double, triple jabs. You know, shoot that shit, move sideways, you know, sidestep on him. Give him a different angle. Don't be right in front of him. When you shoot, boom, hit to the body. Bam, boom, then walk him down. Because what Fury was doing smart, whenever Wilder would try to get off with his one-two, Fury would throw that shit back, tie him up and walk him back. And if, as you can see, he walked him back with the same ease. So the 238 pounds didn't really help Wilder. Now, the whole point is to win. Okay. What I'm going to say about Wilder is this. He fought the best fight that he could fight. Fans put expectations on you that you don't have the ability to execute. So this is not, we're not going to shit on Wilder um, because he lost the fight. He fought the best fight that he could. He was able to drop Fury twice in this fight. You know, and Fury, like I said, Overzealous to land the shot Got caught the same way Now when he got dropped the first time Right Fury When he got up Okay you got me Where was the movement Alright Pop 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 Let me shoot them jabs out there Let me let me move Let me you know give you angles Let me No I don't understand him trying to trade But he made a fight out of it Second fight on um, knockdown He was still a little buzzed from the first one And he was getting hit with unnecessary shots Some of them shots was getting in But if you watch He was blocking most of them His arms was up Got caught one Boom went down but the expression on his face, you can see, uh, he's going to get up. He gets up. So he gets dropped in the fifth twice. He drops Wilder first in the fourth. When he drops Wilder in the 11th round, you see how Javon Sugar Hill was telling him, go to the body, man. The jab, use the jab. This is what I'm sitting there saying to myself, like, why are you not jabbing, man? You hear me say, when you have physical gifts, use them. You're 6'9", you have a much longer reach than Wilder, even though you're only two inches taller. Th that weight behind his shots. Remember the second fight when I told you guys Fury was using his jab a lot of times just as a measuring stick, and as Wilder's going back, as soon as he, Wilder gets close enough to where he's about to hit the ropes, Fury would, boom, to hold him and bam, come over with the right hand. That's what he still was doing. I told you guys. Theory didn't have to be different. Wilder had to be different. The only thing Theory had to do is just be more um, responsible on defense, not get caught with, with some unnecessary shots, which is what he got caught with. If you look at what he got knocked down with, it's because he was, like I said, overzealous to come in, hands open. From that sixth round up to the 11th, Wilder, his child, like I said, his hands was down. He didn't go onto the ropes, Right? Hands down, Fury's being overcautious. But the fight played out the way it did. Now, I will say salute to both guys because they both went in there and fought the best that they could. But I saw holes in Fury's game as well. One thing people need to understand, that swift-footed Fury that could move and be elusive, Fury can't fight like that anymore. He can't do that anymore. 
He's reinvented his style of coming forward because he can't get on his toes and move like he used to. This is not the same Fury that beat Vladimir Klitschko stylistically. He's not that, that, that same guy. He's a different type of fighter now. So Fury himself is in a position where he's going to have trouble with guys that can move. He's going to have, you look at who's there right now and look at, he's going to have trouble with a guy that can move. Because Fury's going to have to depend on you to stand there and be there. This is what you guys need to understand. He didn't have to look for Wilder. With the exception of Wilder walking backwards to avoid shots. And so Wilder is going to try to come in and try to knock you out. Wilder's not going to fight um, the whole fight on the back foot. He did in the second fight. He was trying to just, he didn't know what to do. And this fight, you saw the same thing. He resorted to the same Right? Whenever he got pressure on him. Once he got tired, he had no answers for nothing. So, he was gassed in the sixth round. Like, I mean, you could see it. And like I said, he fought that fight of pure heart and determination at that point. He was, what I saw whenever he would land something, and he get that little adrenaline rush, and he's trying to like, but again, look at how the punches were coming. Look at how he was still going straight back in a straight line. Where was the spring? Where was the where was on the toe? Where was all that? Where was the head movement? Where was the double jabs? Right? Right? Where was the pull counters? Where was all that that you saw him doing with Malik Scott hitting mitts? It's like I tell you guys, you can't just take a guy overnight and all of a sudden he's, you have to be comfortable. And mind you, when he was slipping those, with the head movement with Malik Scott, look at his hand positioning. I'm like, you really think Wilder's going to be in front of fucking Fury with his fucking hands waist level doing this shit? When have we ever seen Wilder do that? So, People use their imagination to try to make a fight more than what it's going to be. They give fighters more ability than what they actually have. But, yeah, I mean, Fury, for example, he was showing a bad habit. Like I said, when he's trying to come in, oh, I got him now. Hands wide open. Throws his shot, leave his hand uh, out here to try to throw that, you know, and Wilder was just going straight back. He was able to get away with that with Wilder because Wilder doesn't know how to make him miss and make him pay. Wilder basically has always been a guy dependent on the right hand. And pretty much what you saw was the fight became repetitive. Wilder pretty much was just, everything was jab right hand, jab right hand, jab right hand, jab right hand. And when he would throw his shots, when he would try to really get him out of there, he was throwing the same shit over and over. Now Fury's able to telegraph that shit better. Sometimes you got to get rocked to, 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 you know, okay, I'm good. You got me. I know what to do now. And basically... Um, Fury was throwing to the body as well You know um, Fury was throwing mostly Like when he would throw shots to the body It was more power shots Wilder was throwing mostly jabs to the body Which is cool You're long Boom Get that distance But what you should have did Same thing Double triple jabs And when you work off that jab right hand Don't be so repetitive And stop throwing it from the same angle You know No head movement When he's throwing his jab he's Boom And he's just straight back When he gets hit Hands up in the air Backing up And I said yeah Wilder has no legs man I don't just mean scrawny. We know they're scrawny. I mean, he just has no legs. Wilder does not know how to move around the ring. And pretty much with all the Malik Scott's efforts and what he claimed they were going to kill Fury, this is going to be war. Fury's not going to survive. I told you guys, look, when you're selling a fight, there's certain things that you say to sell the fight. Okay? But, you know, um, for people who've never been in the ring, it's more believable than to someone who, who's been in the ring and understands, like, it, it's possible. It's possible, but you got to look at the individual that it's coming from. Someone who doesn't have a higher boxing ring IQ that's been fighting one way. Okay, that's like taking Joe Frazier and teaching him to fight like Muhammad Ali in six months or whatever. All of a sudden, this is how Joe been fighting all this. You know, when he come in, slip. Now, all of a sudden, he's on his toes, jabbing, bouncing like Ali. Nah. No. When Muhammad Ali realized, okay, I can fight coming forward if I need to. I can be stationary. I can't move like I used to. You saw Ali doing similar things. Okay. When he, he looking like when he fought Shavers, for example. He couldn't move like he used to. And he's fought most of that fight right in front of Shavers. Um... You know, the Thrill in Manila. They both were older. 
But Joe still doing what Joe does. Ali can't move like he used to. And we seen like, yo, this dude got grit. He got heart. He got determination. You know, and Ali pretty much reinvented his, his, his style. Because once you cannot do what brought you to grace, but you're still great enough to be able to beat the greats, and you know, then it shows, yeah, you have evolved as a fighter or you, you, you still have enough and enough boxing knowledge to understand how to win fights, even though you can't do what you used to do. Okay, the same way. And that's what we saw in Fury. And this is why Fury, the, the camouflage of it is Fury saying he's going to come forward and knock Wilder out. And he did. But the camouflage of that, what he's not telling you is, I can't fight the way I used to. This is why I'm changing my style of coming forward. And you're going to see whoever he fights next is going to be the same thing. Fury is going to be physically bigger than everybody. The only guy that's physically bigger than him, not in height, but in body weight, is Jarrell Miller. There's nobody else that big, that, that effective, you know? So he came in 276. Tyson Fury can't move like he used to. He's become a flat-footed fighter that comes forward and throws bombs. What he does is more of a James Tony type thing now to try to roll his upper body and get out of the way of shots. But um, him being a better boxer than Wilder, it would be a mistake for Wilder to go in there thinking he's going to outbox him. Just like it was a mistake for AJ thinking he could go and outbox Usyk. AJ should have been doing to Usyk what, what 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 Fury was doing to Wilder, okay, and pretty much you know like I said, history repeats itself. You know AJ got beat by Ruiz. Everybody ha 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 ha, including Wilder. Then Wilder got beat by Fury. Come get his belts back. He loses to Usyk. All the AJ haters. Oh, look what happened. Right, right, okay. What happens? Wilder goes and gets beat. The only difference that, that I mean, this was a better fight overall than AJ versus Usyk was because both Wilder and Fury was trying to get each other out of there. Whereas AJ looked lost in there. Like he just, he wasn't making a fight. He wasn't letting his hands go. Usyk did what he had to do. So overall, as far as all four fighters are concerned, Fury and Wilder gave a better effort overall than AJ did. Usyk, you know, um, played it safe. He had to fight in the bag. Can't fault him for that. You know, um, everybody's not going to fight exactly the same way. And I'm not saying, oh, he should have, you know, I mean, if he would have went for the KO, maybe he knocks AJ out. Maybe he gets caught with something. Again. Who knows, right? It's all water under a bridge now. But at the end of the day, y'all, as far as the fighters concerned, I'm not shocked at the outcome. I thought Fury would win. Now, when he got dropped, he very well could have been hurt, hit hard enough to where he wouldn't have got up, but he did. Okay. But I was, I, I felt like Fury would win. Um, that fight was not close on the scorecards. Now, because of the knockdowns. Because he knocked Fury down twice. Yeah, that puts you up. That puts you in a better position, put it that way. But remember, he got knocked down first. Then he gets knocked down and knocked out. It's a fight. I would rather see somebody get knocked out clean or, or lose a 12-round decision clean than to get a, 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 a bullshit favoritism, you know, oh, let's 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 rig the cards and give it to this guy, even though he lost. So there's, listen, plain and simple, we got a clear-cut winner. Now, in terms of tactics going forward with Wilder, you haven't seen any change in Wilder other than him going to the body more than you used to with the jab and doing it early. But it's the same Wilder. It's the same Wilder. But I give him props for fighting his ass off the best way he could. I'm not going to shit on him because of his minions. 
Now, let's get to the end of the fight. A lot of people feel like Tyson Fury was being sportsmanlike and went over there to, you know, shake his hand. And they felt like Wilder was being a scumbag by not, you know, responding to him like a like a like a good sport. I'm gonna tell you guys how I feel. I told you guys how I felt about that, you know, several videos ago. I don't fault Wilder for not shaking Fury's hand, and I wouldn't have faulted Fury for not going over there to shake Wilder's hand, simply because the accusations that was made. You gotta understand something, okay? If Fury was telling the truth about the gloves and all that, and you know the, the egg weight and all, that's what you call defamation of character. And somebody just can't accept the fact that they lost a fight, making excuses, then start attacking your culture, talking about gypsies are all thieves and this and this and your white privilege and all of that. Why would you want to go shake a man's hand that pretty much? is a poor sport and can't just say, hey man, you won. Better man won. On the other hand, if Wilder feels like, no, I know this motherfucker cheated and I believe that in my heart, he cheated. There's no, no. Well, being delusional and having proof are two different things. But if you really truly feel you was cheated, why would you go over there and shake a man's hand as a cheater? Why would you accept that? There's fighters who have hated each other and never, never broke, you know, buried the hatchet. And they have said a lot less and done a lot less to each other. So, um, at the end of the day, that part is a small thing. They don't have to like each other. You punch each other in the face in the, in the fucking body for a living. So, they don't have to like each other. And at the end of the day, they're gone. I don't think Fury's gonna sit here and cry while they didn't shake my hand, <laughs> fucker. So what? Okay. But let me bring something to y'all attention. If you didn't notice this, go watch it. While his left ear was bleeding again, his mouth was busted open again. And did you guys notice how he kept doing this? And I said, when I saw that, Wilder, if you start making excuses again, your, your minions can cheer you to the day you die. But if you make start making excuses, because he was doing that shit in the corner. Now, was it because of the costume again? If you guys didn't pay attention, he kept constantly squinting his eyes, constantly doing this shit. The first fight, he's blinking them and all that shit and kept, you know, but he was doing the same shit in this fight. With them between the rounds, kept doing this shit, right? So did Fury's finger now do this again? Right? I'm just saying. His mouth was busted. Was it because of it? Egg? Was it? No. Let me let you guys know something. The fanboy channels have already started with excuses. I've already heard white privilege. It's a fact. When Wilder went down, he didn't get the same um, chance that Fury got in the first fight to get up and try to beat the count. First of all, Jack Reese was the referee in the first fight. This was not Jack Reese. Secondly, when you guys say you went from saying he was down longer than 10 seconds, we had to constantly remind you and basically educate you guys. It's not a 10 second count. It's a 10 count. Jack Reese, there was a difference, okay? Fury wasn't taking a bunch of punishment. He just got caught with some shit. Boom. Okay, he went down. And he got up. And he did beat the 10 count. I don't know why the fuck people keep saying that dumb shit. Well, I know why. Because they can't just accept the fact that Fury had won the fight. But basically, Wilder was getting punished. He was getting punished. This fight that just happened um, last night, Wilder was getting hammered as well. And when he went down, 
If that referee would have started counting to 10, whether it was a 10 second count or a 10 count, Wilder was not going to beat that shit. He collapsed. It was down. With, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. But it wasn't the same referee. Stop with the bullshit already. Oh, man, he didn't get to see his white privilege. Y'all already know who the fucking culprits are. And I just started laughing. I said, man, I'm not even going to do this shit again. Like, I'm not going to get into this whole. I just want to say, I'm not going to let what they say affect Wilder's performance. Wilder has yet to say anything. Wilder has showed a fragile mind, a weak mind. He thinks he has a strong mind, but no, you didn't even speak after the fight. You said nothing. Someone said, AJ went straight back to the, to the, to the dressing room. He did. What the fuck does this have to do with AJ? Okay, and regardless, AJ gave credit to his opponent and he did the post-conference. He didn't avoid it. Wilder didn't even show his face. I'm saying that because that's the facts. But I'm saying it in response to people who every time something happens with AJ, they have to bring up Wilder. Something happens with Wilder, they have to bring up AJ. To a point where it's like they're trying to parallel their careers to say, well, this happened to him, this happened to him. Okay, AJ got two losses. Well, now so does Wilder. So point is what? And even to say, but he looked better in defeat than AJ did. No, he didn't. No, he put up a better he put up a better fight against Fury. Yeah, but AJ basically AJ basically ended the fight on his feet. Yeah, but but they ended the the round for um, ten seconds too early because they trying to save. And I'm like, what the fuck are these guys talking about? AJ was not in the fucking ring. This was this was Wilder versus Fury. And I said, oh, I see what it is. They already, they was making excuses at the end of the Usyk AJ fight. Clearly, AJ got his ass whooped. Point blank. And that fight was scored eight to four or seven to five on most people's scorecards. Me looking back at last night, like I said, I give both fighters props for fighting the best that they could. Fury came out on top. To sit up here and keep making excuses as to why I got lost. To sit up here and keep making excuses, like Roy Jones made a comment about, he don't want to see Fury versus um, Usyk right now because that's what that what boxing needs because that's gonna be a boring fight. Boxing needs action. Okay, Roy, but here's the deal. Fury fucking beat Wilder. He beat him. Usyk beat AJ. So what we're looking at, we know we're not gonna get the rematch. We're not, we know we're not going to get, we're going to, we're going to get a rematch with AJ and Usyk. So the question that was asked to Fury is, does he want to fight the winner of Usyk and AJ or does he want to fight Dillian White? Now, in my opinion, I think he needs to fight Dillian White. I even heard people, oh, he should rematch Aldo Wallin. No, no. Aldo Wallin will be fighting Dillian White, right? So he should fight the winner then. If you're going to basically win a fight and then hold out, hold out and wait for long periods of time for another fight to materialize. See, the problem with that is that if that fight doesn't materialize, then what did you wait for? And this precious time you're taking out of your own career. Um, now I'm hearing people saying, oh, Fury making excuses, saying he wasn't in shape, he wasn't 100%, oh man. And, and it's like, guys, you guys just don't, you guys just really don't, know how foolish you sound also i heard an excuse about wilder broke his hand that's boxing if his hand was fucking broke that ain't got nothing to do well, hey well it happened in the fight he didn't come in the ring with a broke hand but see remember when louis ortiz had wilder hurt remember all them shots he was landing on wilder and wilder was reeling all over the ring and the referee didn't wave it off right but remember he didn't go down he held on it Fury knocked him out with one punch. Remember how hard people said Luis Ortiz hit, and I said, I don't, I think his power is being exaggerated by these guys. I'm not saying Ortiz don't have power, but the level of power that they're saying he had, well, how did Mr. Pillow Fist 
drop you with one punch, right? When Luis Ortiz had you reeling all over the ring, but you wouldn't go down. Now, you don't always have to be the harder puncher. All you got to do is catch a guy right. But it's what I told you. When you fight the elite level fighters, your limitations will be exposed. We've already saw these limitations. So to keep going back talking about, but Wilder didn't have a law, amateur experience. So fucking what? You did Dillian White. He had more. He had more amateur fights than Dillian White did. So it's the fanboys already starting their bullshit. So like I said, we are. I've already heard. I've already saw white privilege. They did not let um Wilder didn't give Ch Wilder a chance to get up. He didn't give Wilder a ten count. Oh man, he didn't get the same opportunity that 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 um that Fury got in the first fight. Yo. Wilder broke his hand. I could tell. He even said it. Because in the corner, I got to swore. I, I think I heard Malik Scott say this and this. And sources tell me he broke his hand in that fight. And, and you know what? You, you, they, like, really? What they was doing? The referee was showing favoritism. Look. what Fury kept leaning on him. First of all, he warned Fury about the leaning. But guess what? Wilder doesn't know how to slip and move. Wilder doesn't know how to roll out his shots and move. Wilder was making it easy for Fury to headlock him because when he comes in to throw his shit while the turns and leans down Fury's doing what he's supposed to wrap his arm around that motherfucking neck put his weight on his back push his ass backwards he's making it easy this is part of what I'm saying with boxing IQ Wilder doesn't know how to disengage and he doesn't know how to keep you from engaging in you know uh, um, um, pretty much doing what you need to do imposing your will to win the fight so he made it easy for Fury to do those things. And Fury knows Wilder doesn't know how to stop me from doing this shit. So what the fuck are you going to say? Stop holding him. Stop ducking your fucking head down. I seen rabbit punches last night. I seen punches behind the head. I saw I saw several things. I'm not saying, oh, look what he's doing. Oh, no. Listen, this is a fucking fight. Shit's going to happen. That referee was too fucking small for them two guys. He kept it. Wait, 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 wait. He had a hard night with both of them. He kept warning both of them. So stop with the white privilege bullshit. Stop with the fucking broken hand bullshit. Stop with the fucking they gave Fury another long. Oh, that's another one. Oh, they gave him a long fucking count when he got. It's like, here you guys go, man. So I guess for the next two years, we're going to see a whole lot of, oh, this person and that person said, and this happened and that. And. They're going to have more little red circles around certain parts of the body or something to try to prove and make points about nothing. It was a good fight. Both men came in there and fought the best way that they could. Fury won the fight. As far as I'm concerned, it's 3 nothing. Okay, but it's 2 nothing, one draw. Where does Wilder go from here? Who knows? Wilder's biggest problem... It's his mind. He's not strong. He thinks he's strong. Wilder's weak. Wilder needs to understand. You're not going to be able to knock everybody out. You're not going to be able to catch everybody as clean as you want. Somebody's going to be on to what you're doing. And it's going to be difficult for you. When you have limited skills. So what Malik Scott brought to the table, what people, you know, like I'm saying, because it won 11 rounds. Oh, yeah, but look, there's a more victory, though. That motherfucker was 277. I'm like, you know how much. How can I say this nicely? Do you know how much of a little sweethearted punk bitch you are to even let that come out of your mouth? Out your stinking, filthy mouth or moral victory. Only suckers go for that moral victory nonsense. You're talking about two professional fucking fighters that came into the ring to do battle not once, not twice, but three times. Oh, and because 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 Fury's the physically bigger guy, it's a moral victory all of a sudden. So the fact that he got two knockdowns against Fury but got knocked out, it's a moral victory. Both guys can look at the fight and say we fought our asses off. Nobody wants to be the one that lost. But the pillow-fisted guy is the one that walked away with the victory from a knockout. It's a moral victory. These are the fanboy channels. I've yet to hear what Wilder have to say. 
And knowing while this past, <laughs> you know, you just never know. Hopefully for himself, because it doesn't affect me what he says or any of these fighters. But hopefully for himself, he doesn't come out and embarrass himself again. OK, hopefully for himself, he doesn't go firing everybody now and, and making excuses for everybody. Did you see the situation with the gloves? Did you see the motherfucker standing there? Yeah, but, 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 but uh, a fighter just fought with the same path and gloves and it didn't look wrinkled like that. Uh, but, 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 look at the gloves. I'm like, asshole, pick the fucking glove up. Put your fucking hand in it. If you're trying to imply there's no padding, you test it out. Take the right glove, put it on, test it yourself. Take the left glove, put it on, test it yourself. All you did was stood there and made an argument about the last fight I had on Pathing Gloves. They didn't look like that. But they got several pairs of gloves laying on the table, and you're sitting up here arguing about wrinkled gloves. You're sitting here making a big deal on camera. What you thought was going to happen was Wilder was going to win, and they was going to see. Now, you see, he went in there, and he made sure that the gloves are straight, and he did this and he, but it didn't go that way. Now, all of a sudden, Team Wilder is silent. Why? People can't just accept the fact that they lost. Why? People can't just accept the fact that everybody else is not going to be on the bandwagon. Everybody else is not fools. We know the difference. When people try to make you feel as though the only reason somebody won if that person won because they cheated, but yet you saw it differently, that's okay. Lying to yourself doesn't help you. I remember Max Kellerman made a comparison with Ali and Wilder. And he said how sometimes fighters are just to a point they just can't believe that that they lost. And, you know, Ali felt like he more won, won more rounds than Frazier. No, he didn't. You know, when I'm like, that was a really stupid comparison, Max. And I'm going to tell you why it was a stupid comparison. Ali feeling like he won more rounds. Okay. He probably really feel like he won more rounds. Earlier in the fight, it was different. When the fight started to change, when Frazier started to really get momentum and pick up, those rounds were more memorable because it was from, like, the middle rounds on. Like, to where now, okay, and you saw Ali look fatigued, more fatigued than Frazier did. Frazier's face was all swollen up, mouth all busted up, both eyes. So, Ali probably really did feel like he won the majority of the rounds. Okay? But he gave Joe Frazier credit. And he didn't go on no fucking two-year hiatus and start talking shit about, oh, man, this motherfucker cheated. He did this. He had loaded gloves. He, he No, he just felt like he won more rounds. Nothing like what Wilder and, 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 and his and, and his uh, minions were doing. Not to mention, Ali was out of fucking boxing for three and a half years. Came back, had one fight with Jerry Corey. One. One. And then went in there with an animal like Joe. Got dropped. Remember that. But finished that fight on his fucking feet. Jaw was all fucked up. I don't remember if his jaw got broken, but I know it was swollen the fuck up. And pretty much, Joe won the fight. Now, to believe you, to say, I can't believe Ali. I don't believe Ali's mindset was nowhere near what Wilder's was. And what it is. That, I mean, it would, to feel like, okay, put it to you this way. Chavez versus Pernell Whitaker. Clearly, Pernell Whitaker dominated that fight. Clearly. Clearly. Now, if Chavez said, I think I won most of those rounds. Bullshit. That wasn't even close. Pernell dusted him off. Outboxed him. There's, that fight wasn't even close. It was a complete masterclass of boxing. They called that shit a draw. And they never fought again. What else? What else? Um, okay. People felt like Evander Holyfield lost the first fight to Lennox Lewis. If Evander Holyfield says, I think I won the majority, no, bullshit. But again, nobody has made those excuses like that. 
the closest thing we've seen that you can rival, and it still it still pales in comparison, but was Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson. With all the Tyson fans bitching, and even Tyson, that's the one complaint he had, was saying that um, they gave Buster a long count. But other than that, and they made excuses, oh, Mike was out, you know, fucking women, and Mike was... Whose who fucking problem is that? So what Buster's supposed to do? I'm going to hold back because, you know, Mike was out partying. The only reason Buster won, because his mother died, and, 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 they made it, and, and they gave him a long count. Because he... Bro, listen. Listen. A poor sport is just going to be a poor sport. Plain and simple. Again, and I'm about to close this video. Both guys fought to the best of their ability. Tyson Fury was the winner. Who Tyson Fury fights next? You have to be seen. Let him celebrate his win. Wilder. Who he fights next? We don't know. Um, if he can get himself up, motivated enough, you know, because when people lose and they don't want to do a post conference, they don't want to talk, they don't want to, you know, it, it, it's it's not a good sign. It's not a good sign, and you know what a lot of people will say, and this is one of the biggest fallacies that people make. They'll look and say, yeah, but he dropped Tyson Fury twice and Fury's 276 and Fury's the best boxer out there. So, I mean, only Fury's the only one that could beat him. Yeah, you think that and then all of a sudden he goes in there with somebody else, especially someone who's been studying his shit and watching his fucking mistakes and wind up knocking his ass out because why? Up here and here and in here, it's like, nah, nah man, shit didn't go the way it was supposed to. You seen him walking out the arena, pumping his fists up in the air. Okay. So, I'm pretty sure he's doing that to people that was probably yelling to him. Hey, man, good job, Deontay. A good fight, Deontay. Something like that. But at the end of the day, if you can't accept the simple fact that you got your ass whooped, then what good are you to yourself? So, mentally, this is what he needs. You know, I heard one round, Malik Scott was telling him, wake the fuck up, baby. The whole fight, if you listen, Malik Scott was, was yelling at him the whole fight. Because, you see, to tell us that Wilder's a different fighter is going to be completely different. No. Only thing, like I said, Wilder just do, he got busy earlier. That's all. Do more body shots, more jabs to the butt. That's all he did different, man. Like I said, the little things that you, it, same shit. The first fight went 12 rounds. Let's not get it twisted. Let's not get it twisted. I didn't see any big difference in Deontay Wilder. I saw the same shit. I saw him try a little harder, um, hustle a little bit more with throwing, like I said, throwing more body um, shots. And, and But it was the same Wilder, especially when he would get rocked and when he got tired. You saw the same. He resorted back to the same shit that he always did. Too predictable and too many jab right hand, jab right hand, just too, too much. And when he was throwing the hook, he was slapping with it. When he was throwing them wild punches, that's what I'm saying. Where was all that head boy? Where was all that calm poise? I'm going to work up. Where, where, where was all of that? This is what I tell you guys. You guys that tried to make it seem like Wilder was a whole new fighter because Malik Scott said he was. Because you saw him hit some mitts. Because you got guys putting up videos talking about, oh, Deontay Wilder destroying sparring partners. And Okay, cool. Now let's hope he can go in there and destroy Fury. So... Excuses, lies, you know, it doesn't get you anywhere in life. You got to accept reality. You got to understand who you are, what you are, what you need to change, what you need to work on, okay? Um, And just before I close this video, let me just say to the people who didn't get it, okay? You see the video I did with the roar, 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 roar? Yeah, okay, I was, somebody said that I had a demon in me. Because I had so much hate uh, 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 for Wilder. And I, I I basically said, you know what? Yeah. Because I said that Wilder is going to have to be different. He can't rely on just power. 
you know, if he's not fortunate enough to land that shot and get Fury out of there and Fury hangs around, he's not going to outbox Fury. And it's going to be an uphill battle all the way. And he's probably more than anything going to get exhausted from throwing nothing but power shots, power shots, power shots. And pretty much Fury's too smart. He has too much boxing ability to not be able to outbox Wilder. And I had no real interest in watching the fight. In fact, I didn't watch the fight um, live. And I, like I did, like I said, I might watch the replay just so I can give, you know, you guys the boxing news. And pretty much we sat and we watched it. And it was like, you know, and that's how that went. So, yeah, the audio was on purpose. I was possessed. A demon came over me. That's exactly why my voice sounded like that. I couldn't control myself. It just came out and it's like, they're right. I'm really possessed. I have a demon for telling the truth. So when you tell the truth and you speak of what you see and not what people want to hear, it makes you evil. So, yeah, I saw people got it. But then you had people like, the audio sounds terrible. What happened to the audio? What happened? Duh. Read the title. And even in the video, you hear me say, I'm possessed. It's, it's, you know, y'all hear me. I just wanted to get that out there because a lot of times people listen and watch stuff and go, but, but the audio sounds bad. Yeah. I was possessed y'all, but I'm good now. I'm straight. I'm good. The, the demon's gone now. For now. Never fall in love with lies. Remember the truth brings hate out of people and I will catch y'all on the next video.